Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at the Onychonycteris, one of the earliest bats known. Fossils of this ancient bat have been found in Wyoming and date to around 52.5 million years ago during the Eocene period. The first thing I should address is their size. As you can see here in Ark, they are pretty big, but this is just another case of the game developers using some creative license. In reality, the bats were of an average size around 25cm long with a wingspan of about 52cm. Compare this to modern bats, the smallest, Kitty's hognose bat, having a wingspan of just 15cm, to the world's largest bat, the flying fox, with a wingspan of around 1.7m. Bats are the only mammals capable of true powered flight and rival birds with our ability. With most bats being nocturnal, many of them rely on their ability to echolocate to manoeuvre in the dark. But one question has plagued evolutionary science. Which came first, the ability to fly or the ability to echolocate? All fossil bats showed evidence of capable flight and echolocation. So the answer to this question was frustratingly out of reach. That is, until the fossil of Onychonycteris was found in 2003. Clearly it was a capable flyer. Its wings are very similar to modern bats, except for a claw on each of its five fingers that make up the wing. Modern bats have claws on only one or two digits of each hand. This feature is what gives it its name. Onychonycteris means clawed bat. One diagnostic feature of echolocation in bats is an enlarged cochlea. This is a spiral-shaped hollow bone found in the inner ear that plays a large part in a mammal's ability to be able to hear. Relative to their head size, all bats that echolocate have a massively enlarged cochlea, but the size of the skull of Onychonycteris shows that the cochlea was too small to support echolocation. This was taken as direct evidence that the flight developed before the ability to echolocate. So if the Onychonycteris didn't use echolocation, how did it fly around without crashing into anything? It's possible it was a daytime flyer, or had excellent night vision like modern fruit bats. Unfortunately, the upper part of the skull of the fossil, including the eye sockets, was crushed and researchers have been unable to get any clues from this specimen. With the exception of the upper skull, the fossil Onychonycteris is remarkably well preserved, and much can be told from its appearance. The fossil's teeth indicate that the Onychonycteris was an insectivore. Its wings were proportionally smaller than today's bats, but its hind limbs were unusually long. It also has strong, robust claws. These details, together with the previously mentioned claws on all five fingers, indicate it was a strong climber and was well suited to life in the trees. It probably hung upside down like modern bats, but most likely from trees and not cave ceilings, as its claws are too large to fit in the small cracks in the rock. This does make its positioning here at the zoo a little inaccurate, but given the fantasy nature of the setting, I hope that can be forgiven. Well, that's all I have for you today, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. I hope you join me next time, where we'll be taking a look at the Megalosaurus. Goodbye.